Welcome to Smart Punk Live. Today, Rob and I are hanging out in the studio with Florida's own Go Radio. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason. I'm Alex. And uh, we're from Go Radio. Two yeah. parts. Two parts. <laughs> Two parts. <laughs> You're missing members. Where are they? Hola. Well, uh, our, our bass player, Burns, just got married. He's in Antigua. A couple of weeks ago. Antigua. Antigua. Wow. I don't know where that is. Bar? Downtown? No. <laughs> yeah. no, no. no, that's a bar downtown. Is it really? No, yeah. I think oh. he went somewhere else. It's a honeymoon, Rob. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's what it was. Maybe he, uh, he actually just, went to the bar. He just, he just went to the bar, bar. Antigua downtown in Orlando. <laughs> they just got a free there. plug. Like, <laughs> for a week straight. <laughs> oh, will come up later. Yeah, they the, do have three for ones for happy hour in Antigua. Ooh. They do. They do. You when, is ha Rob when is happy hour over? Uh, uh, seven. Three to seven? seven? Usually. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Enough about Antigua. Enough about that. Um, I know you guys released um, Welcome to Life and Do Overs and Second Chances, mm -hmm. but you also have a new album coming out, yeah. Lucky Street. Um, I know you, you recorded that with Tim O'Hare, who you know worked with bands like Starting Line, All yeah. American Rejects. What was that like? He was incredible. You know, um, Tim was really a uh, I don't know. I don't. He had a, a very very odd kind of production style, I guess. He he was very uh, kind of in the back and just kind of. Uh, steering us towards the direction that he thought was so best. So you had more of the control, but he yeah, had absolutely. the overall focus. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it was, in, it was different than anything that we had worked with before because he kind of, without being too influential on the song, like he, he steered us in the right direction, kind of like bumper cars in a bowling alley. You know, like the mm, bumper. That's a good metaphor. Things like it kind of, it kind of like metaphor, kept dangerous us, situation. Yeah, <laughs> like he, he would be quiet and we'd just sit there and have to grind over and over like, what are we going to do? And then right pop in at the key moment, you know, like really. But that almost seems like a better style to do I mean, it. We're happy with the, yeah. really happy with the way. It took it some getting used to, but yeah, look, looking back, it, 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 uh, it worked out. Although frustrating, it was still, it still worked out for the record, so we're, we're excited. Yeah, and I also notice on this album that you have re-recordings of Forever My Father mm -hmm. and Why I'm Home. What kind of changes can we expect for those songs compared to the demo versions? Um, both of those songs for us, you know, we, we kind of wanted to keep them relatively close to what we, what we did originally, yeah. just because we were happy with them, the fans were happy with them. Um, Fred, my father is full band version though, so oh, wow. we're all really excited about that. Oh, that's but good. Uh, I can't awesome. wait to. <laughs> Speaking of Fred, my father, you guys have songs like that one and Goodnight Moon, or like really strong, mm -hmm. amazing lyrically. The balance of just those ballads. How, how does one begin writing from like those songs to your heavier rock songs and like the correlation between I'm gonna switch from piano and then go into something that like the crowd just like really really pumped them into like it also sounds like two bands but it is just one band like what is your writing process like overall how, how, does, how does it start well uh, everything always starts out with you know just uh, vocals and an acoustic guitar or vocals and a piano you know it, it's always just a singular instrument and and nine tenths of the things that that we come out with start out as just a simple folk song, you know, just not. It's never. I personally never sit down and, and go, this is going to be a fast song or this is going to be a slow song. You know, if if you've listened, you know, and a lot of people think I'm crazy when I say this, but if if you listen to the song and and really sit down with it and just kind of let it breathe, it'll do it itself. You know, it'll it'll right. it'll let you know, hey, I want to be upbeat or or. I want to go to a bridge here, or, or I want to kind of like calm down and do an anti-chorus, or you know, it, it'll just sort of unfold. Yeah. Right. Do you start with like lyrics, like, because like the song from my father seems like it's something like straight from a journal, and it's like so personal, but it, I mean, it touches you in so many different ways. Because a lot of singers like to write in metaphors. It's like, oh well, the song sounds like it's about this, but really, the song about watching TV, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> Forever, my father was a uh, really, really kind of a. Uh, uh, spur of the moment thing. Um, it was written on the day of my dad's viewing, actually, um, by mm -hmm. me, my sister, and my brother. Um, we were all just sitting there, you know, uh, in the viewing room after everyone had left, and it was kind of kind of crazy because there's the there was the casket right there in the middle of the in the middle of the the church, or whatever. And then there's a piano right here and a piano right here off to the side of them. And uh, at the time, I I really knew very very little about how to play piano but my sister is, is amazing so she just kind of looks at it, she goes I just kind of want to go in and sit with him and play for a little bit so she did she goes in and she sits down and she gets behind the piano that's and she the starts voice playing that's, on there. that's the female voice she's amazing yeah it's really 
But uh, she starts playing, and then I went in there and, and started playing with her a little bit. My old, my old brother comes in, and he's he's doing you know doing his thing and, and sitting with him, and it's just all four of us there together, and uh, it just it's it's one of those moments where you ever just hit get hit with a feeling that what yeah. you're doing right then is incredibly Regular. important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even you know? just hearing about this yeah. story right now coming from you, I mean, it's <laughs> really touching. You guys, that like was the, you guys are like a Jackson 4, man. <laughs> 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 well, okay. that, that was one of those moments for us, for, for all of us. And uh, I called a friend of mine, his name is uh, Lee Dias, and uh, he runs a studio in Valdosta called Earth Sound, and it's, it's incredible. He's a great yeah, friend so and an amazing engineer. He does an amazing job on that song. Thank you. Yeah. It's very touching. All of that shows in the mm -hmm. final production Thank is you. basically what we're getting at. Yeah. He, he recorded it that night, you know, was, was uh, wow. I called him, I was like, hey, um, I'd, I'd like to, to record this tonight. And he goes, how far away are you? I'm like, I can be there in an hour and a half. He goes, okay, I'll meet you there in an Perfect. hour and a half. <laughs> so yeah, that's exactly how that went down. And it, it was, it was really hard to kind of recreate in the, uh, in the new version, just because there's so much just raw, undealt with emotion, emotion there and just everything right. was was uncensored and just you know but when you go back to that moment I mean it has to come back you know it, it sure. comes back but it's not nearly as as strong it comes back in a remembrance way as opposed to you know a, this is the exactly what's moment, happening right. right now you know